Well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Human Zarenkup. I am the product manager of the wireless design area here at MathWorks, uh, and I manage products including uh, communications, LTE, and wireless LAN system toolboxes. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this MathWorks webinar entitled MIMO Wireless Design for 5G LTE and Wireless LAN in MATLAB. Let's go over the agenda of the talk today. I would like to introduce you to the new MATLAB and Simulink capabilities for wireless design. And that includes uh, MIMO and multi-antenna methodologies, including beamforming, that are widely used in modern standards, such as the upcoming 5G, LTE, and Wi-Fi or wireless LAN standards. And my goal here is to show you how easy it is to use these capabilities uh, to model, simulate, analyze, design, and test wireless systems in MATLAB, the environment that you are uh, familiar with. Now, as the format of the presentation today, I decided to act as a curator, if you will. Uh, I have worked with many of my colleagues listed here to produce these short topic-oriented videos, which delve into each of these subject matters individually. The first presentation is on the topic of the 5G library, presented by Daniel. Then we're gonna go over the hybrid beamforming presentation by Rick. The LTE MIMO beamforming on ray tracing channel is presented by Mark. I go over the Wi-Fi standard supported in uh, Wireless LAN System Toolbox. Colin will present the WLAN 802.11AD simulation. Laura will uh, talk about the IEEE 802.11A8 support in WLAN System Toolbox. And finally, Mike will go over our capabilities regarding Winner2 channel modeling. Without any further ado, Let's go over these series of presentations, and I come back at the end to summarize. This video introduces the 5G library for LTE System Toolbox and how you can use it to model in MATLAB the candidate technologies for new radio 5G systems. The 5G library is a free downloadable add-on for LTE System Toolbox. It builds on the infrastructure of LTE System Toolbox, allowing you to easily construct end-to-end -end simulations based on existing LTE models. This library allows you to simulate the following. 5G channel models as specified in Technical Report 38.900. New radio waveforms such as filtered OFDM and Walla OFDM. It also provides functions and link level reference designs that allow you to explore the behavior and performance of 3GPP new radio technologies. MathWorks 5G library ships with the 5G channel models specified in Technical Report 38.900. This specifies two models for link level evaluations, TDL or tab delay line and CDL or cluster delay line models. These channels support a bandwidth of up to 2 GHz and are fully parameterizable, giving full control of parameters such as the delay profile, the channel delay spread, Doppler shift, MIMO correlation and others. For the CDL case, you can also specify the antenna geometry, including the polarization, the number of antennas per panel, and the total number of panels and their spacing. MathWorks 5G library ships with a MATLAB example, analyzing the performance of the new radio waveforms considered for 5G. In LTE, the bandwidth occupancy is limited to 90% of the allocated band. This limitation does not apply in 5G. Bandwidth occupancy can be increased due to the reduced out-of-band emissions of FOFDM and WOFDM. In this figure, we have increased it to 108 rather than 100 RBs. Here we show the spectrum of the resultant signals. As expected, both WOFDM and FOFDM exhibit a more rapid drop-off in power outside of the useful band. There are a few more observations that can be made. OFDM decay is very slow. FOFDM decay is much superior to WOFDM. However, a few more elements have to be taken into account before 
drawing a definite conclusion. Let's start with OFDM. Out of the box, OFDM does not meet ACLR requirements for LTE, and therefore requires some sort of filtering. In this plot, we have included a low-pass filter, which meets ACLR requirements. In the figure, this is labeled as LTE filtered. At this point, the performance of WOFDM in blue appears to be significantly inferior to FOFDM or the filtered LTE waveform. This is measured in terms of signal distortion, or EVM, and the energy in the neighboring 5 MHz band. It should be noted that WFDM requires fewer computations than FOFDM. One final point worth considering is how real-world implementation with less than perfect amplifiers may impact performance for some schemes. This figure shows the impact of nonlinear amplification. When this is taken into account, the performance advantage of FOFDM over WOFDM is less straightforward. Which scheme is more interesting will depend on the exact parameters as well as the RF implementation. All these effects can be analyzed and modeled with the 5G library for LTE system toolbox. MathWorks 5G library ships with a MATLAB example of downlink throughput measurement with closed loop feedback. You can select any of the 5G waveforms, like WOFDM or FOFDM, and any of the 5G propagation channel model profiles. This is the block diagram of the MATLAB code, whereby all of the parameter values are configurable. The transmit chain is based on the LTE standard with turbo coding. The throughput results computed over 1000 LTE frames are shown here for single antenna transmission and two receive antennas. Results are shown for OFDM, FOFDM and WOFDM, as well as for TDL and CDL channels. To learn more about the MathWorks 5G library, just go to LT System Toolbox product page at mathworks.com slash LTE. Then scroll down and enter the 5G library tile. By clicking on the download add-on button, you can then download and install the 5G library. This video introduces hybrid beamforming for wireless communication systems in MATLAB. As 5G standards evolve, the goals are clear. Higher data rates, lower network latency, improved energy efficiency. We have insufficient bandwidth up through 6 GHz, and this really drives the need to move to millimeter wave frequencies. Now, the resulting propagation paths are much more challenging. Large antenna arrays enable beamforming, and this beamforming can offset the impacts of the propagation challenges. The greatest beamforming flexibility requires independent weighting control over each element, but these dedicated transmit and receive modules for each channel are costly for large arrays. System partitioning for beamforming between the digital and RF domains is called hybrid beamforming, and this is what we'll go through today. A beamforming that's implemented between the digital and RF domain really provides the trade-off of performance, power dissipation, and implementation complexity. The subarrays contain RF channels with phase shifters, and the digital beamforming can be performed on signals outside the subarrays. We'll start with looking at array design and analysis. We can design an array, we can apply tapers and do thinning algorithms on the array. We can build up subarrays and have overlapped arrays as well. We can synthesize arrays from a known pattern. We can model imperfections to help with things like developing calibration frameworks. We can also look at life cycle analysis by modeling failures of subarrays and individual elements in the array. And finally, we can increase the fidelity of the model by importing actually measured data for the antenna patterns or perhaps a design that includes the effects of mutual coupling. We can analyze the design and build the array up in MATLAB and assess the pattern that results with the array. In this example, we have an eight by one patch array. We build up a subarray from these patch arrays with 64 total elements. We can see the resulting pattern that, that uh, is produced. We can build this up in MATLAB and we can use a antenna that we designed in our antenna toolbox we make that element be the one that's used throughout the array to have a higher fidelity model. While the antenna design and the array design can be done in MATLAB, simulating hyperbeamforming requires the ability to model analog and RF effects as well. Simulink allows you to do this along with the RF block set. These building blocks that were defined in MATLAB are used directly in the system level simulation. You can see here we have the beamformers, 
with the weight supplied and then feeding each of these subarrays which have the phase shifters in them. We can build up our arrays in MATLAB and export the results to Simulink. In this figure you see the RF budget analyzer which allows us to build up a string in the RF domain and for each of the components that we use to build up our system we're able to specify the specific parameters that go with each of those components. We also have a library of algorithms for beamforming. Use beamforming to increase the signal to noise ratio, improve the frame error rate, or the data rate. We can take all the components that we put them together as a system. In this example, we're looking at the link level evaluation as we put all of our pieces together to run a full simulation. This model can be extended to include multi-user support for beamforming. With baseband beamforming, we can also create multiple beams. And this RF beamforming serves different users in a sector. In summary, the antenna, RF, and array and signal processing algorithm development can be performed in a single environment. You've seen pieces of the antenna toolbox, the phased array system toolbox, and the RF block set, including communication system toolbox for baseband processing. We know that modeling can help to define architectures for hybrid beamforming. You can validate your results and your scenarios before hardware is built. Please visit our website for more information at mathworks.com slash solutions slash wireless communications. This video presents an example of MIMO beamforming on a ray tracing channel using LTE waveforms. Products used include MATLAB, LTE System Toolbox, and Phased Array System Toolbox. We generate a 20 MHz LTE signal with 64 QAM modulation, non-codebook based MIMO, transmission mode 9, and we adjust the number of layers and the pre-coding depending on the propagation channel characteristics. Let's have a look at the channel model. We model N scatterers or reflectors. We associate each path with a delay and attenuation. The delay is normalized by the line of sight distance. The attenuation is due to free space propagation as well as atmospheric absorption. Both the transmitter and the receiver use an antenna array and we can vary the number of antennas. For the transmit antenna array, a signal leaving at angle theta d incurs a delay from antenna k compared to antenna 0, that is k multiplied by d multiplied by sine theta d divided by the speed of light. LTE uses OFDM, which makes each subcarrier a narrowband channel with flat fading. The channel matrix H, as seen by the receiver, has a size number of received multiplied by number of transmit antenna. One popular tool to analyze how to take advantage of the channel characteristics is the singular value decomposition, or SVD. We can easily compute the SVD of a channel matrix with MATLAB. The SVD decomposes H as the product of two unitary matrices, U and V, and a diagonal matrix, S. We can now rewrite Y as U multiplied by S multiplied by V transpose multiplied by X. If instead of transmitting X, we transmit V multiplied by X, which means we are using V as a beamforming matrix, the receiver now sees U multiplied by S multiplied by X. Each column of the matrix V can be seen as a beamforming vector for a transmit layer, as it distributes one layer over all transmit antennas. Using V as a beamformer results in each layer being multiplied by a singular value at the receiver, ignoring the multiplication with unitary matrix U. Actually, we only transmit as many layers as there are singular values with decent energy, so we only use the first n columns of the V matrix. Let's look at some examples. We simulate a channel with two scatterers at 2.4 GHz with eight transmit and two receive antennas. You can see the scatterer locations. The transmitter and receiver are separated by 300 meters. 
the free space loss is about 90 dB. The channel impulse response has two paths, each corresponding to one of the scatterers, and the SVD of the channel has two similarly large singular values. The bottom left picture is the view of the transmit beamforming based on the SVD. As you can expect, the energy for both layers is concentrated towards the direction of the two scatterers, minus 37 and plus 15 degrees, as any energy sent to all other angles is lost. The view on the receiver side is hard to interpret with only two antennas, so let's increase the number of antennas to eight. Now you can clearly see the energy being picked up from the two directions corresponding to the scatterers, minus 54 and plus 15 degrees. You can also observe that out of the eight possible singular values, only two are non-zeros, one per scatterer. Let's run the LTE simulation with and without beamforming. The scatter diagram in red shows the received constellation of the beamforming case is less noisy than without beamforming. The beamforming gain measured on the EVM is about 6 dB. Let's switch to a rich channel with 20 scatterers and a 60 gigahertz carrier frequency. Now the free space loss has increased a lot and we also observe atmospheric loss due to the absorption at that frequency, about 15 dB per kilometer. We can see that the scatter diagram is much worse. The beamforming gain is reduced because there is less of a clear direction to target, but beamforming is enough to make decoding succeed while it breaks without beamforming. This simulation makes extensive use of LTE system toolbox for LTE waveform generation, as well as the whole receiver algorithm, and phase array system toolbox to model free space loss and atmospheric absorption, and to visualize the antenna array radiation patterns. This video introduces the 802.11 wireless LAN standards and how you can model them in MATLAB with wireless LAN system toolbox. 802.11 is a set of wireless networking standards developed by the IEEE. They govern how we connect to our Wi-Fi enabled devices around the home or at the office. The most commonly used of these standards are 802.11a, b, g, n, and ac. They operate in the 2.4 or 5 gigahertz frequency bands and have a limited range of up to 100 meters. 802.11b and a support transmission in a 20 megahertz channel bandwidth using a single stream of data with maximum throughputs of 11 and 54 megabits per second, respectively. 802.11a uses OFDM, and 802.11b uses DSSS, or CCK, modulation schemes. 802.11g has the same physical layer as 802.11a, but operates in a 2.4 gigahertz band. 802.11n increases the maximum throughput to 600 megabits per second by allowing for a larger 40 MHz channel bandwidth and MIMO transmissions with up to four spatial streams. 802.11ac supports a maximum bandwidth of 160 MHz, up to eight spatial streams, and multi-user MIMO with up to four users. These capabilities allow for a theoretical maximum throughput of seven gigabits per second. The new 802.11ah standard is designed for a different use case. It is optimized for low power, long range, and low data rate applications such as smart grid, machine to machine communication, and the Internet of Things. 802.11ah operates in the 900 megahertz frequency band, which has much better propagation characteristics than the 2.4 or 5 gigahertz bands, allowing for links up to 1 kilometer and penetration through walls and floors. Smaller channel bandwidths between 1 and 16 megahertz are used, which limit capacity but facilitate low power and marginal links. 802.11ah physical layer specification is based on the 802.11ac standard. Therefore, a number of advanced features, including 
multi-user MIMO are still supported. The 802.11 AD standard is intended for high data rate, short range communication. For example, streaming video between a phone and a TV. It operates in the 60 GHz frequency band, allowing for a higher data rate, but due to significant path loss, its range is more limited. To compensate for the effects of the path loss, 802.11 AD uses a directional scheme and relies on phase arrays and beam forming to steer transmissions towards a receiver. The 802.11 P provides wireless access in the 5.9 GHz band. This includes data exchanges between vehicles and between vehicles and the infrastructure. 802.11 P is the physical layer specification used as part of the dedicated short-range communication or DSRC standard. The physical layer of 802.11 P is essentially the same as 802.11 A. However, it operates using a 10 MHz bandwidth rather than a 20 MHz bandwidth. This means the symbols are twice as long, which improves performance in scenarios involving mobility. Wireless LAN system toolbox provides MATLAB functions for the design, modeling, simulation, analysis, and testing of all these wireless LAN standards. Examples provided in the toolbox help you get started quickly. They include waveform generation, transmitter and receiver measurements, such as spectral emission masks and EVM, end-to-end -end link modeling with fading channel models and packet recovery. To learn more about Wireless LAN System Toolbox, check out its product page at mathworks.com slash wireless LAN and contact us to obtain an evaluation copy so you can try out its functionality. This video introduces 802.11 AD waveform generation for wireless LAN system toolbox. Here we examine 802.11 AD and demonstrate how you can use wireless LAN system toolbox to generate a standard compliant waveform and simulate spectral emission mask testing. The most commonly deployed standards are 802.11 A, B, G, N and AC. They operate in the 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz band with a channel bandwidth between 20 and 160 MHz. 802.11AH operates in the 900 MHz band, allowing links to penetrate walls and floors and span distances up to 1 km. 802.11AD is intended for high data, short range communications, for example streaming video between a phone and TV. It operates in the 60 GHz band where plenty of bandwidth is available, allowing for a throughput up to 6.9 gigabits per second over a single spatial stream. 802.11 AD is a directional communication scheme. Within the standard documents, it is referred to as DMG, which is the terminology we use within Wireless LAN System Toolbox. To overcome the large path loss at 60 GHz, directionality is required. This is achieved using antenna assemblies such as phased arrays and beam steering at the transmitter and receiver. 802.11 AD defines four different physical layers. The control phi is used to set up links before beam forming has been established, therefore it is designed to operate in very low SNRs. The single carrier phi is used for general beam forming links. The low power phi trades off coding gain for a low power consumption. And the OFDM phi is designed for high throughput links in very frequency selective channels. All four phi formats share a common packet structure. The preamble is used for synchronization. The header contains information required to decode the payload and optional AGC and training fields are appended to the packet for refining beamforming waves. In this example, we generate a standard compliant 802.11 AD waveform containing five packets. We pass this waveform through a pulse shaping filter and oversample it. Next, we apply a high power amplifier model, which introduces in-band distortion and spectral regrowth. Finally, we test that the resultant spectral emissions are within the standard defined mask. First, we create a DMG configuration object and configure it for a single carrier transmission with MCS12. We then use the waveform generator to synthesize a waveform containing five DMG packets. Each packet contains a random payload. Next, we pass the waveform through a raised cosine transmit filter to perform pulse shaping and oversample the waveform. Now we introduce in-band distortion and spectral regrowth by passing the waveform through a high power amplifier model. In this example, a RAP model is used with a back off of 0.5 dB. Finally, we evaluate the spectral emission mask of the resultant waveform. Note the out-of-band emissions are within the standard specified mask. 
wireless LAN system toolbox provides functions for the design, simulation, analysis and testing of 802.11ad and other standards. Examples provided include waveform generation, transmitter measurements such as spectral emission mask and EVM, end-to-end -end link modelling with feeding channel models and packet recovery. This video introduces the use of WLAN system toolbox to generate IEEE 802.11ah waveforms. 802.11ah, also known as S1G, operates in the industrial scientific and medical band below 1 GHz. This band has better propagation characteristics than the 2.4 or 5 GHz bands, allowing for links up to 1 km and penetration through walls and floors. 802.11ah is optimized for low power, low range, and low data rate applications such as machine-to-machine -machine communication, wireless sensor networks for the Internet of Things, or extended coverage in home or commercial wireless networks. Two steps are required to generate S1G waveforms in WLAN system toolbox. First, you can set up the transmission parameters of the desired S1G waveform in the configuration of the WLAN S1G config. In the second step, you can call WLAN Waveform Generator to generate the S1G waveform specified by the configuration object and the PSU input bits to transmit. Three modes are defined in the S1G standard and can be specified by a WLAN S1G config object. The S1G 1 MHz mode operates with a 1 MHz channel bandwidth and is intended for low data rate applications. S1G short and long preamble modes support channel bandwidth between 2 and 16 MHz. S1G long preamble mode allows for multi-user transmissions. In the following slides, we show how each S1G mode can be configured to generate the corresponding waveform. The S1G 1 MHz mode is easily set up by specifying the channel bandwidth to be equal to CBW1. For this example, we consider a scenario with a single antenna and the PSU to transmit is a random sequence of bits. The S1G1 MHz mode includes a new modulation encoded in a scene, MCS10, to improve robustness and to extend its transmission range. MCS10 is based on a BPSK modulation with half coding rate as MCS0, but with a two times repetition after encoding. When MCS10 is considered, the short training field STF is boosted by 3 dB to allow for improved packet detection. An S1G short preamble waveform with 2 MHz channel bandwidth is considered in this example. The short preamble is set up by specifying the preamble property of the WLAN S1G config object to short, and a channel bandwidth greater than or equal to 2 MHz. 802.11 standards including S1G have pilots with fixed locations between OFDM subcarriers. When fixed pilots are considered, their position does not change over time and their magnitude is the same as that of subcarriers. However, tracking the varying channel conditions due to a high Doppler environment is not effective with fixed pilot locations. Traveling pilots have been introduced in S1G to reduce the effect of the Doppler spread caused by vehicular motion. If the traveling pilot's property of the WLAN S1G config is set to true, the position of the pilot changes over time, and their magnitude is 1.5 times the magnitude of that as a carrier. The third transmission mode defined in 802.11ah is the S1G long preamble mode with channel bandwidth between 2 and 16 MHz. The long preamble is set up by specifying the preamble property of the WLAN S1G config object to long, and a channel bandwidth greater than or equal to 2 MHz. This example generates a waveform with four space-time strings transmitted through four transmit antennas. The generated waveform is transmitted through an indoor 4x2 MIMO TGA channel with four transmit antennas and two receive antennas. With WLAN TGA channel configuration object, we define the properties of the indoor MIMO TGA channel model. The receive signal in two antennas can be displayed with the DSP Spectrum Analyzer. WLAN System Toolbox provides standard compliant functions for the design, simulation, analysis and testing of IEEE 802.11ah.
S1G waveform generation is available from release 16B, and the indoor MIMO TGA channel model is available from release 17A. This video introduces the Winner 2 channel model for Communication System Toolbox. This add-on software became publicly available in October 2016 and offers new channel modeling techniques. This Winner 2 channel model is a MathWorks adaptation of the well-known Winner software built by a European consortium a number of years ago. It is a spatial model that incorporates antenna array geometry into a time-varying impulse response. So what can this software do? It is a spatial channel model for multi-user MIMO where the channel is specified geometrically rather than statistically. RF frequencies up to 6 GHz and signal bandwidths up to 100 MHz. This is a very relevant model for 4G channels and all 5G channels that must be backwards compatible with 4G. It models line of sight and non-line of sight propagation. Both are important in 4 and 5G. 12 indoor and outdoor propagation scenarios. These scenarios include urban, suburban, and rural examples. Arbitrarily large antenna arrays for massive MIMO applications. Isotropic, dipole, and user-defined antenna element patterns. A variety of antenna array types, linear, circular, and user-defined. Small and large-scale fading effects. The former is useful for point-to-point -point link simulations, and the latter is useful for multi-user system-level simulations. Channel filtering in a streaming fashion. This is an enhancement beyond the original winner code. So with this introduction, you might ask, how do I learn more? After you download and install the add-on, type Help Winner 2 at the MATLAB command line, and you will get this listing of documentation, functions, system objects, and examples to help you understand what Winner can do and how you can use it. The examples are particularly instructive for the new user. If you want to know how the Winner software constructs a channel, then uses it to filter a signal, then this flowchart should be helpful. First, define an element pattern using a function like winner2.dipole, which is part of the add-on. Then, using the winner2.antenna array function, create an array pattern from those individual element patterns. The winner2.antenna array output feeds into a layout creation function called winner2.layoutParset. This function creates the pairings between base stations and mobiles and places them in specific XY coordinate positions. The winner2.wimParset function defines system-wide parameters such as polarization, angles of arrival and departure, line of sight versus non-line of sight propagation, and path loss models. All these parameters feed into the winner2.wim function, which generates filter coefficients, and the com.winner2 channel object, which internally generates those same coefficients and filters an input signal with them. So now you might ask yourself, how do I set up a simulation? This graphic shows the process. First, you create an antenna array inventory. Then, assign base station and mobile station locations. Choose an antenna array type for each base or mobile. Set up links between the base stations and mobiles. Assign a scenario for each link, urban, rural, etc. Choose line of sight or non-line of sight propagation for each link. And finally, set up the additional system parameters that you care about, as listed here. So how about an example? Here's how you can create base station and mobile station antenna arrays. These are uniform circular and uniform linear arrays, which come pre-canned for you in the Winner add-on software. This code shows how you would set up your links between bases and mobiles. You can see the configuration structure as the output. Then, you can create your model configuration using winner2.wimparset without any arguments. Here is the output structure. Here's how you would generate the channel coefficients using the winner2.wim function. Note that the coefficients are in a cell array with a length equal to the number of links. Each element of the cell array is a 4D array that accounts for the number of receive antennas, the number of transmit antennas, the number of multipaths, and the number of time samples. This code shows how to create a winner system object. You can use the info method of the object to learn important derived properties of the channel. This code shows how to actually filter the signal with the object. The output signals are cell arrays, where each element of the cell is a 2D matrix that accounts for the number of time samples and the number of receive antennas. So you might ask yourself, how do I find this software? Well, the first thing to note is that this software is available starting with R2016B. The Winner 2 add-on will not work with previous versions of MATLAB. If you do have R2016B, then you can search for Winner MATLAB. When you do, you should see an entry that looks like this image. That's the one you want. So you might also be asking yourself, how do I install the software? Well, once you click on the link, you will find yourself on the MATLAB file exchange page picture here. This page gives you a two-paragraph description of the software. 
along with a list of system requirements. To download the software, you can click the Download Submission button on that page. That will launch your MATLAB and the installer for the Winner software. All right, now that we have seen all these uh, seven individual uh, short videos, you may ask, where do I find more information? So I would like to ask you, please, to visit our product pages at mathworks.com slash products. And as you can see here, we have multiple wireless design products, uh, such as Communication System Toolbox, LT and Wireless LAN, Antenna, Phase Array, and RF Block Set, uh, features of which have uh, been shown in these videos. You can also visit uh, our wireless design solution page at mathforce.com slash solutions slash wireless communication. Thanks.